Well, let's try this again. I'm going to pick up where I thought I may have left off. However, there were several interruptions in my message, so I'm going to do my message one more time. Before we start, please be cautious of somebody who we received word from over the phone that there is an individual driving around the area with a car that looks like a police car and who is shooting at, the, at people. I saw this posted earlier this morning on Facebook and there was a picture of a person, individual, accompanying that announcement. So let's just be uh, cautious, let's lock our doors and stay away from the windows and uh, I shall continue with this. I want to go to the end, actually, close to the end, when we talk about all the doubting that, that I've mentioned in the course of the first port, part of our presentation. And now I want to talk to us about our responsibility as individuals, as Christ's disciples in this year, 2020. Before I begin, however, I am going to say that we have been hearing wonderful reports of various people who have gone about assisting and helping others. I'm continuously imp impressed with the, the announcements made by many of the build companies and businesses congratulating the people who have been on the front lines over the last number of weeks. Let us continue to be the positive support of them and let us continue to be positive supports to our neighbors. Folks, we do see the wounds of Jesus around us. We see them in our heart when it is pierced with the spear of loss. We see friends or we ourselves who find it difficult to understand why God would take their friend from them. We think of God whenever something bad happens to us and find it easy to blame him for what we suffer. Because of sudden death, because of a death of a prolonged period of time, some people tend to forget God. We can forget God when a relationship breaks apart. We can see where the nail holes were in Jesus' hands and feet. We can lose our, as we lose our use of our own hands and feet. Or when friends can no longer hold things or find it difficult to walk because of advancing age or for whatever other reason that might be. We can see the wounds in Jesus' back when we ourselves fail to carry someone in need on our back. When our hearts are hardened like that of the Pharaoh and we might not respond to the need that God sets before us, we make the wounds deeper. Each of us has something special to share. Our gift might be as simple as a phone call to a lonely person, or it may be as complex as fighting for the rights of others to live as free people, free to follow their beliefs without fear of persecution. I know that the simple act of faith, the simple act of believing, can be difficult. It was, and it continues to be. We have 2,000 years of testimonies that should convince us that all this is true. From the day of Pentecost in the year 1 to the second Sunday of Easter in the year 2020, we have more than enough evidence that Jesus is our Lord that he is the Christ and that he has risen from the dead to save us from our sins. Jesus let himself be nailed to a wooden cross so that we can live free of the guilt of the slip-ups that we do once in a while. When we do the work of our Lord, special things happen. We are given insight and wisdom that we did not know we possessed. We are given the strength and the commitment we could no, not otherwise muster. We are granted a peace that is beyond understanding. Faith is meant to be shared and to be spread. With the guidance and patience of the Holy Spirit, 
We can be the one person it takes to make a difference. We can be the one person who can help remove any doubt that others may have. In 1 Peter it says, you have not seen him, but you love him. You do not see him now, but you believe in him, and so you rejoice. Amen. You take a minute to comment about birthdays for this week. There are two for the Pugwash Pastel Charge. I'm not aware of any for Collingwood. I still don't have a list of birthdays from them yet. But Norma Mando and Joanne Tuttle are celebrating birthdays this week. Let our prayers be with those who are unwell, with those who are unwell because they are confined at the moment and their freedoms are limited as to where and how much they can go about their daily work, daily needs, and their daily duties. Also, let's be with those who have passed and who are now in the protection of God's love with the saints. In closing, I would like to say, as we return to the world, listen for the voice of our wonderful shepherd who gave himself for us. Share his love in joy and friendship with open hearts, open minds, open hands, and open lives for all the world. Amen. Hugs, and I'll be talking to you later.